Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis Ophthalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about the management of HSV keratitis, that is the investigations and the treatment for herpes simplex virus keratitis. In the previous video, I have covered about the ocular features of the herpes simplex virus keratitis. If you have not watched the video, it is there in the description box, please do visit. So before going to the management of HSV keratitis, let us recap what was discussed in the last video. So if you see the ocular manifestations of HSV, it affects the lids also leading to blepharitis, it affects the conjunctiva also, it affects the iris also. So if you come to the corneal lesions, we have the infectious epithelial keratitis, stromal keratitis and the endothelitis. I had included this neurotropic keratopathy as well as the metaherpetic keratopathy as separate entities. So in the infectious epithelial keratitis, we have the corneal vesicle formation or the dendritic ulcer, geographic ulcer and the marginal ulcer. Whereas in case of the stromal keratitis, we have necrotizing stromal keratitis and the immune stromal keratitis. And in the endotheliitis, we have disiform, diffuse and the linear. I found few tables which are very much useful to all of you. So I thought of sharing that here. This table shows what are the associated stromal diseases in each type. Apart from the epithelial manifestation, what will be there in the stroma and other corneal involvement and what is the mechanism by which it is caused. I have discussed the same thing in the previous video. This is just in a tabulated form. So in the infectious epithelial keratitis, as you know, there is dendritic, geographic or the marginal ulcer. So coming to the stromal involvement in the infectious epithelial keratitis, it is because of the secondary scarring in response to the epithelial disease. And this is because of the live virus in the epithelium. Okay, next we will move on to the necrotizing stromal keratitis. There is necrosis and ulceration with a dense infiltration in the stroma, but there is associated epithelial defect. And this is due to the direct viral invasion of the stroma. When you come to the immune stromal keratitis, there is infiltrate, neovascularization as well as the immune ring under scarring and the thinning of the stroma. And here there will not be epithelial defect and this is due to the antigen antibody reaction. Okay, so coming to the endothelitis, here there is secondary stromal edema due to the endothelial reaction. The KPs are there both in the DC form linear as well as the diffuse form. Again this is due to the immune reaction. Coming to the neurotrophic keratopathy, here there is ulceration in the scarring in the stroma. This is because of the impaired corneal innervation and damaged epithelial cells. Okay. And this is the table which shows the difference between the infectious epithelial keratitis and the neurotrophic keratopathy. And this table shows the difference between the HSV marginal ulcer for which the closed DD is the staphylococcal marginal ulcer. So these are the differences. So you can note down the differences. So how to come to the diagnosis when you come across a case with a dendritic ulcer. So if the patient comes with a dendrite, take the careful history and do the physical examination. And if you find some of the skin lesions, okay, if there are skin lesions, then go for the corneal sensation. If the corneal sensations are reduced, it could be herpes zoster virus infection or varicella zoster or vaccinia. If the corneal sensations are normal, then it could be keratosis folliculosis. Suppose there is no skin lesion only. Patient is having the dendritic ulcer but there is no skin lesion. Then if the patient gives some history of usage of drug like the topical beta blocker or the, the idoxurudin, then it could be the drug induced lesion. If there is no history of usage of any medication, then ask for history of contact lens usage. If there is history of contact lens usage, then consider the acanthamoeba as the DD. And if there is no history of contact lens usage, it could be Tigerson's SP case. Okay. So this is the flow chart which shows how to go about a patient with a dendritic ulcer. So what are the complications this HSV can leave? So following the HSV keratitis, there can be secondary bacterial infection neovascularization of the cornea or there can be necrosis of the cornea or the stromal scarring and even the perforation of the cornea. So coming to the investigations of this HSV keratitis proper. So what are the samples you can take in HSV keratitis? You can go for the corneal scraping, the conjunctival swab, the tear film also, the vesicular fluid of the vesicles, the skin scraping and even the nasopharyngeal swab. So these are the samples you collect. And these are the investigations you will do, like the direct examination of the infected samples, cytology, electron microscopy or growth of the virus in the tissue culture, detection of the virus antigen, serological test and even the PCR test. Coming to the antivirals now. So what are the antivirals? The antivirals are purine or the pyrimidine analogs that are incorporated into the viral DNA 
thereby leading to formation of abnormal viral DNA and inhibiting the replication of the virus. So in the antivirals we have four types that is idoxuridin, vidarabin, trifluridin and the acyclovir. So idoxuridin coming to the mechanism of action how it acts it inhibits the DNA polymerase incorporates into the viral RNA thereby inhibits the protein synthesis and thereby halting the replication of the virus but it is very toxic to the even the host epithelial cells it is very poorly soluble and it is less potent compared to the other antivirals and it is used as 1% drops 1 hourly in the daytime and once in 2 hourly in night time. The vidarabin the next antiviral the mechanism of action is it inhibits the DNA polymerase enzyme. This is little safe compared to the previous one that is idoxuridine but it is highly insoluble and less potent. It is used as 3% ointment 5 times a day. The third antiviral that is trifluridine the mechanism of action is similar to the idoxuridine that is it inhibits the DNA polymerase incorporates in the viral RNA and inhibits the protein synthesis. This trifluridine is more potent compared to the previous two used as 1% drops 9 times a day for 2 to 3 weeks. Coming to the acyclovir most commonly used this is the more specific and selective agent because it is activated only by the virus infected cells containing the viral thymidine kinase and it doesn't affect the host cell as it is not activated by the phosphorylation in the host cells. So it is very much safe so non-toxic okay. It is available as 3% IO ointment used 5 times a day. When it comes to the oral drug that is the tablet form, it is available in 800 mg tablets given 5 times a day. So what are the side effects of these topical antiviral drugs? It can lead to the punctal occlusion or the punctal edema. There can be follicular conjunctivitis, limbal edema and even the superficial punctate keratopathy, filamentary keratopathy as well as the trophic ulcer because the healing is impaired. Next is the steroids. So what is the role of steroids in the HSV keratitis? The role of steroids in the HSV keratitis is controversial. The steroid usage has some advantage, disadvantage, even the complications. And there are specific indications where steroids should be used. So coming to the advantage of steroids, it inhibits the cellular infiltration, opacification and the scarring is decreased. The release of the toxic enzymes is also decreased and there is less chance of neovascularization if you use the steroids. But the disadvantages are it exacerbates and spreads the active viral infection by suppressing the normal host immune response. It increases the viral replication okay, and it causes the corneal thinning. It also has the complications like it can lead to stromal necrosis and the perforation. There can be secondary bacterial invasion as well. So these are the various medications which we use to treat the HSV keratitis. Now we will move on to the specific type of HSV keratitis and what treatment is indicated. In the primary HSV keratitis as I have already discussed it is self healing only supplement with the preservative free lubricating eye drops that is enough for the cornea to heal. If you come to the recurrent type in that infectious epithelial keratitis treat with the acyclovir and you can also try the debridement in case of infectious epithelial keratitis. This is done only in case of dendritic ulcer stage. The debridement should go 2 mm beyond the edge of the ulcer because the pathology extends still that uh, area also. So go for the debridement and if the ulcer is not healing then you can switch to the vidarabin. And still if the ulcer is not healing then you should suspect the neurotrophic type of keratitis or there can be stromal involvement. And there is no role of steroids in the infectious epithelial keratitis. Coming to the necrotizing stromal keratitis. You can start with a topical acyclovir and steroids can be started once the epithelium is healed. Next is the immune stromal keratitis. Here you should go for the topical steroids, topical antivirals and oral steroids if the disease is severe. In neurotrophic type as you know it is because of the impaired corneal sensation and decreased tear secretion. So stop all the medications first. Go for preservative free artificial tears with a gentle debridement. You can also try temporary tarsal if it's not healing. In the metaherpetic keratitis, the treatment is same as that of the neurotrophic type of keratitis. In the next few slides, I will be discussing about the steroids where it should not be used, where only topical steroids should be used, where the systemic steroids can be added and the antivirals that is the acyclovir, where topical acyclovir is indicated and where systemic acyclovir is indicated. 
so there is no role of steroids in case of hsp conjunctivitis infectious epithelial keratitis as i told and the disease is very mild like mild immune stromal keratitis or mild disiform endothelitis or even the non inflamed neurotrophic keratopathy you can go for topical corticosteroids in case of marginal keratitis or immune stromal keratitis as i told and moderate form of endothelitis that is disiform on the diffuse type inflamed neurotrophic keratopathy and the moderate iridocyclitis or the trabeculitis the oral steroids should be used in conjunction with the topical corticosteroids if there is severe immune stromal keratitis or severe form of endothelitis is disiform diffuse and the linear and severe iridocyclitis or the trabeculitis then go with the oral corticosteroids topical antivirals are indicated apart from the keratitis even if the patient is having blepharitis conjunctivitis so infectious epithelial keratitis as well as as a prophylaxis treatment when you are using corticosteroid in the treatment of immune stromal keratitis oral antivirals are indicated in primary hsv infection if it is very severe in selected case of severe diffuse endothelitis selected case of severe iridocyclitis if there is linear endothelitis in immunocompromised patients and the patients who are refractory to the topical medications and as a prophylaxis against the recurrent infectious epithelial keratitis and as a prophylaxis for post pk patients with a history of hsv keratitis so these are the specific indications for oral antivirals so hope this video on the management of the hsv keratitis is useful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my videos and leave your valuable comments thank you so much